a unique and provocative look at today's current events. We provide the answers and a better understanding of the world around you. So catch Therapy Cable Live, Monday through Friday from 12 to 2 Pacific Time on TherapyCable.com. It's the moment you've been waiting for. Fast Eddie Chambers, pro heavyweight boxer with a record of 42-4 and four with 23 KOs. This guy is somebody you don't want to mess with. Let's welcome to the show, Eddie Chambers. Welcome, Fast Eddie. Hi, Eddie. Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, very interested in uh, what, uh, what you guys are going to ask me in, 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 in regards <laughs> to me being a tough guy. Because really, I'm really not a tough guy. I just, I just do this for a living. You're a teddy bear who plays a tough guy on TV. Without a doubt. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you then, Eddie. How did you get started in boxing? <laughs> well, it's funny. Uh, my father was a fighter in the 70s, and uh, oh, wow. he uh, also trained guys. And he really had the idea of, of basically you know, teaching me the sport a bit, but he never really, so he says, wanted me to enter the, uh, you know, into the sport as a, you know, as a fighter, really. And, you know, for a long-term career, anyway. He started with a dirty game, very tough to, to make it in. And, but it didn't work out that way. And uh, I was a uh, very, very, very passionate kind of kid. Never really wanted to get in. He got a confrapation. Oh, and wow. He kept being, it was funny. I know it really is. <laughs> he kept something to kid. You know, you know, I was going to be cool. And, you know, I was getting bullied a little. And, you know, never, nobody ever really challenged me less, less like physically, but... It was the home bullying, you know how that is. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it really, it was tough early, but uh, once I got into the sport, I, I got a little more confident. And uh, although I didn't really want to do it for, for a long period of time, um, it kind of grew on me, and I got respect because of it, and, you know, kind of mm-hmm. stuck. But you have an incredible talent. I mean, just to grow on you, and all of a sudden you're 42. Yeah. <laughs> That's a heck of a talent. There's a lot of fights, there's a lot of getting beat up. That's what that is right there. <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's been interesting along the ride. I've been to a lot of good places, met a lot of great people. And uh, it's given me the opportunity, the vehicle to, you know, learn a lot about myself and, and um, you know, once you get to other places and see how other people live. And, you know, and it, it, it's nice to be uh, admired by uh, your peers, you know, some of your peers, and also... Uh, you know, the fans. It was, Absolutely. It's it really nice, and, you know, when you go to different countries to be accepted. And uh, it's, you know, I, I really enjoy that aspect of it. That so, sounds good. So your very first win, how did that, how old were you, and how did that feel? My, my very first uh, amateur or pro fight? I'm going to say pro, actually. Okay, my very first pro fight was, I was 18 years old. I was pro at 18. Oh, wow. wow. Um, I spent four years amateur, and, you know, my dad had the idea after, you know, seeing me compete in the amateur ranks, so, you know, let's get out of here. We went to try for the Olympics, uh, you know, went for the trials, and I didn't, I didn't uh, qualify, so went on term pro, but I was 18, and uh, I had no idea. I didn't know about blood from all over the wall, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I, I really, honestly, I didn't, I didn't see myself really going that far. You know, it sounds crazy, right, as, uh, as an athlete, but... You know, I wasn't the most confident kid, you know, in the world at the time, but my father beat it into me, let's just say that. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll leave it so that. now you were telling us that you um, you train other fighters now? Yeah, well, I train. You know, I mean, honestly, I don't want to get that deep into the training aspect. I've been through this business uh, for a very long time as a fighter. But I don't mind training people who just want to get in shape and, you know, I'll give advice and stuff like that to uh, uh, people on out personal training because I understand about fitness and nutrition and things like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I train these guys are my friends, and, you know, they still, still do business, obviously, by them. You know, it was not a free thing like that, which is appreciated, you know, because I would do it, honestly, for free. But, Let me ask uh, you this, Eddie. Who was, who was your mentor in the boxing world? Say, say it again? Who was a mentor for you in the boxing world? To be honest, I mean, I had a few, you know, oh. a, a few different guys. You know, my father for the longest time was the was the main guy. He was, <laughs> was a, a great mentor to me. And, you know, although he was tough on me, he really prepared me for what I was going to be facing uh, in the sport of boxing. But um, then at one point, 
So uh, my manager at one, one time was uh, Rob Murray, who was pretty pretty uh, solid mentor at one point. Um, and then, you know, I met different people. You know, as I, when I moved to Philadelphia is when I really, because I'm from Pittsburgh originally, but I moved to Philadelphia, and uh, that's when I started to meet other great people. You know, I got away from my comfort zone of Pittsburgh, PA, and then moved to Philly, and that's when I started meeting great people. Like, I got other, other great people in my life now. Uh, by the name of uh, Mario Stevens, I met Lamar. Those those people are extremely important to me and have been with me basically since I moved there, and you know steered me in the right direction in a lot of ways. You know, so, and of course now you know um, the likes of uh, James Ali Bashir, Peter Fury, you know guys like that, okay. have also taken me to the next level in in, in, in my boxing career and so, the man as well. So now that you've had, I mean, obviously you have a fair amount of wins under your belt. Are there any new young boxers up and coming that you you find yourself sort of drawn to watching? Honestly, uh, you know, I, the, my, my way I fight, the skill level I have and things like that are more tied to the lighter weight guys, you know, the, the speed and coordination and athleticism. But, I mean, there are some heavyweights that I like to watch. But, you know, my favorite fighters, uh, you know, and not necessarily – you say young fighters, so I'll, I'll mention a few. Uh, it's funny because some of these guys aren't so young. But right. <laughs> I, I like watch the obviously Floyd Mayweather. Is, yeah. Is, you know, oh, yeah. But, you know, you got, I'm sure you guys know about him. Absolutely. So, uh, Guillermo uh, uh is uh, a Cuban Olympian who turned professional now, world champion as a as a uh, professional. He's another guy that I like to watch. Um. um Andre Ward. Uh, Garcia. Yeah. We'll be talking. We'll be talking all night about. Right. I know. And I'm sorry. A couple. Uh -huh. We're we're already going to be running a little bit low on time, but I did want to ask you: Do you have kids? Okay. Yeah, oh, so one more time. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are you a dad? You know what? No. Well, actually, yeah. I, I am. It's not biologically uh, my child, but both. You know, my, my girl's child, and she's just as much as like. You know, my kid is anyone, is any other kid would be even my own blood. So, oh, so now, if she wanted, if she wanted uh, to follow in the footsteps of say, Ali, whose daughter obviously went on to fight, oh, would yeah. you? What would you do if she decided she wanted to fight? Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's one thing if your son, right? So your daughter is like, ah. Oh. But you know, if it's something that she really wanted to do, I would do my very best to steer her on the right, on the right path and make sure that she, you know, did the right things and make the same mistakes I made, you know, as far as the financial mistakes and, you know, signing contracts, all those things that you, you know, you think, I mean, you think you know what you're doing or you hope you're, you know what you're doing and you're trusting the right people. They turn out to be the wrong people, but, you know, I just will try to steer her in, in the right direction and make sure that her, she's in good hands and, and learns the things to keep her, her face and body and brain intact, you know, before... Uh, yeah. We got a couple minutes left, and, and I just wanted to get a couple questions in really quick. I'm always fascinated, especially the way you uh, presented yourself getting into boxing. How did you feel with your fight with Klitschko walking up to the ring? And so I'm talking before the fight starts. You got the crowd, a huge crowd, I'm sure, watching that fight. You got all the promotion. Were you nervous? Were you excited? Were you ready to pound? What was going on through Eddie's mind? I'm, you know, in the dressing room, this is the height of the nerves for me. But the ring walk uh, is generally when it all becomes, you know, it all settles down. You start to get excited. Oh, really? You start to appreciate, you know, your, your position. You know what I mean? You get to see. Like, I, when I saw Vladimir, it was in uh, the Eastern Arena in, uh, in uh, uh, Dusseldorf, Germany. Uh, actually, it's where the uh, heavyweight championship that he just won and lost, Tyson Fury was. But anyway, That's it, right. was, uh, hum it was humbling. You know, to see 55 or 52,000 in, in, the, in the stadium. It was amazing. Wow. 50? Wow. That's a lot of people. <laughs> I have to admit, did, did you think of Rocky Four at that point? I mean, you're in another country. You got this tall <laughs> Russian-looking gentleman. <laughs> I kind of did it to a degree, you know, at Holland Real, but I always, I, you know, I, that Holland of being, you know, in a position to, you know, just shock the world. It's so nice to be able to do something. It, it was really like, and the funny thing is, that Rocky is one of my favorite movies of all time, actually. So oh, really? I actually had that kind of a moment, right? 
Yeah, you did. You really did. So I ended up fighting that guy that actually looked a lot like Dolph Lundgren in the uh, fight right before the world title fight that I had. So it was kind of funny. It was also in Germany. So oh, really? He was also six foot seven or six foot eight. Oh, so wow. Geez. How tall are you? I'm only six one. Wow. So, but you're, yeah. I have to fight giants. So it's crazy. So, oh, my gosh. Okay, so in that, in that, um, range, I know, and I'll let you ask another question, but with Creed, oh, did you see Creed? And if you did, how did you feel about, like, that revival in terms of the boxing? Because I thought they did an exceptional job about covering, like, the, you know, sort of the underground yeah, fighting yeah. scene and and then just the rise to the top and how much work you really got to put in. Oh, I, I think they did an excellent job. I think it was also what they did was they used a lot of real fighters in the mm -hmm. movie, which... I thought it was a, a great idea. And what it did was to help the actors to understand exactly what they needed to do boxing-wise to kind of, you know, actually live the life and, you know, be a fighter. So it was, it was good. I really, really enjoyed that part. And I'm a big fan of the Rock franchise, so, you know, to see it depicted that way and, and, and you know, into the uh, new age, it was great. Had a lot of a lot of guys that I could that I consider, uh, you know, obviously my peers and friends of mine, like, the, the main antagonist in the movie was uh, uh, Tony Bellew, mm -hmm. who was uh, who was a pretty good friend from over in the UK uh, that I met and I sparred with him. It's funny because in the at the time we were working and training, he was getting ready to fight Nathan Cleverly for uh, the cruiserweight title, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we were sparring for that. And he was doing the movie. He was going back and forth, forth to the US and the UK wow. to do the movie stuff. So. And he was trying to get me to get into it, but I couldn't. I had a fight over there. But uh -huh. <laughs> so, it was, it would have been, it would have been awesome. I loved it in a movie, especially my, one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Last question for you, Eddie, before we go. Thank you again for being here. Uh, last question. We always like to ask our athletes this. What do you do or what do you think about when tough times are approaching? What does Eddie say to himself to get himself over tough challenges? Well, I just, I just think, uh, you know, when, when something gets really, really bad, you know, I'm always happy even when it seems like when, when I shouldn't be. And the reason <laughs> for that is I see a lot of unfortunate people out there. You know what I mean? You know, there's yeah. homeless folks there. You know, there's people that, you know, they were, they were friends of mine and that I know that came up really rough, a lot rougher than me. And, hmm. and I just look at that and think, well, my situation is not all that bad. Compared to that. There's always somebody doing worse than you. Hmm. So, you know, I never let, you know, any hard times, you know, completely crumble me. I always look at there's always an opportunity, always, always a way uh, to get on your feet or at least move forward that direction. So that is generally what the way I look at it. That's a great attitude. Thank you so much, Eddie, again for doing this. Thank you and good luck yeah. with everything you got going on. Thank you for having me. And, uh, I really appreciate you guys for uh, bringing me on. Oh, it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Eddie Chambers, everyone. What a class act. True gentleman and a true boxer. Watch out for that knockout punch.